Chris Thompson. I'm with our SAC studio, uh, vice president on the board, and I'm here today to help out at this uh, heritage center here that's recently opened on Native Americans. And we have a lot of participants today, not just uh, Native American history, but also we have representatives from the Underground Railroad, uh, the Stockade Association, the Historical Society in Schenectady, um, the Schenectady Community College is here to promote their tourism and hotel courses, but also the archaeological department. Uh, this tourism uh, project is evolving, uh, which was started by our executive director, Randall Hoag, at our SAC.TV studio right here in Viaport Mall. Uh, today will be our biggest event yet. The goal is to promote historical sites along the Erie Canal from Schenectady to Utica, Rome. So if you're seeing this today, come on down and join in on the festivities. We're really happy to promote uh, Schenectady in particular, but all the other areas on the Erie Canal that are also here today. Hi, I'm Ingrid O'Connell, professor of Schenectady County Community College in the Department of Hotel, Culinary Arts and Tourism. And we're here to, today to promote the college to the public and the various programs that we have that involve uh, tourism and hospitality in the Capital District. We're happy to be here. Hi, my name is Diana Carter, and I'm an archaeologist and an adjunct instructor in the Community Archaeology Program at Schenectady County Community College. Uh, this is our 20th year in the program, and we have a non-credit certificate in community archaeology. We, to get this certificate, the student takes six courses and participates in at least 30 hours of field work and 30 hours of laboratory work. Most of our work is done in the Schenectady Stockade. Uh, we do a lot of research, we do digging, we do lab work, we do reporting. And this is an example of one of our digs in the stockade. It was at 32 Front Street and uh, we went in thinking we were going to find one thing and we found the French and Indian War instead. Uh, it's a dump made probably in 1756 when after the 5,000 British and American troops left to go west to uh, besiege the French at Fort Niagara. Uh, we found cannonballs, we found grenades, we found a lot of ceramics, trade beads, pins, uh, pieces of wine glasses, pieces of wine bottles, and horse and cow and pig bones. <laughs> uh, very somewhat typical of what we find around the stockade, the bones and the ceramics, but the, uh, the solid shot and the grenades and the silver braid that you see on here were a special find. Uh, the braid, you can see here the braid was probably put on someone's uniform. It's silk threads and wound around with silver and then braided into a pattern. The piece that we found is only, it looks bigger, but it's only about two inches long. We found a lot of English coins and one of our rare finds was this pipe stem that came from Chester, England. There's only been one other found in New York State that we know of at this point and that was found up at Lake George. Uh, our program consists of six courses. We documents and documentary research, uh, Native American archaeology, historical archaeology, field work, laboratory work, and data and archiving. And for, along with the 20 hours in the lab, sorry, 30 hours in the lab and 30 hours in the field. Uh, 
Our work is recognized by local archaeological firms, by the State Museum and the uh, OPRHP, the Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Places. Uh, several of our people have gotten jobs at places like the State Museum. And this is, people recognize our certificate and know that our students and our graduates are have enough training and enough knowledge to work under the supervision of archaeologists. I'm Connie Colangelo, and I just happen to be the president of the Schenectady Night Park Exchange. And I've been the president for maybe 10 or 12, 14 years. I don't know how many years I've been doing this. The Schenectady Night Care Council was founded in uh, 1990 by the city of Schenectady. Uh, the mayor appoints the people on the committee. The council has to confirm their appointments. And we've been in business 38 years with our exchanges. First exchange was in 1984, and we've had uh, an exchange almost every year since. Um, we send our children over there for two weeks. They send their children here for two weeks. Uh, we host them. They live in homes. They learn how we live. We learn how they live. And uh, it's very inexpensive to be involved in the group. And um, we have fundraisers to raise money to keep the group going. This year we're hosting 10 youth from the Netherlands. And next year we're sending at least 30 adults to the Netherlands. And we represent the city and county of Schenectady. They, people when they go over there or come here, they love the friendly visits, they love their host families, they love the area that we take them to, um, they love to shop here, <laughs> we love to shop there, they, um, they like the, the day programs we put up and if you want to see this is a program that this is just an example of what one of their days is when they're here. And when we go there, we um, we go to uh, Amsterdam, we go to all the villages and cities around, we go to the uh, uh, Kirkenhof, which is the, garden, the famous gardens in the Netherlands, uh, we go to um, the North Sea on a boat and do the mud walk. That's very interesting in the cold Atlantic water. Um, we do a silent march uh, in May, on May the 5th. Uh, and that's everybody in the whole community gets together and they walk through silently, no talking, no noise. And there are designated spots where we lay wreaths in commemoration of the war and the soldiers that died during the war. And at the end of the whole thing, we go to a park where uh, the Schenectady Night Cook Council puts a wreath in honor of the uh, death of the soldiers. It's very interesting. And we see almost all of Holland, and we we travel with families. Um, we travel, we live with families. We learn their culture. They learn our culture. We get to be best friends. It's in my bag. Here. My friend, I've stayed with her six times, and we're like sisters. And uh, we talk on the phone all the time now, and we all have this connection, and we all get together and we love each other, and it, it's a really wonderful thing. It's like we have family in the Netherlands, and I'm Italian. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, my name is Mike Diana. I am the Programs Manager at the Schenectady County Historical Society, and I'm here to show off some of the things that we have coming up. We have a lot of different programs for people of all ages. Um, if you're not familiar, we have three different historic sites in and around Schenectady. We have our Schenectady Museum and Library at 32 Washington Avenue, and that's kind of like our headquarters where we have a lot of our old documents, our archives, and a lot of the records of Schenectady history, so if you're ever interested in doing research on your own, that's probably one of your first stops to go to. Um, we also have exhibits there, and we leave walking tours from there, so there's always something going on at the Schenectady Museum. Just down the street from there, we have our newest acquisition, which is the Brower House, and I say that it's our newest acquisition. It's actually one of our oldest properties. It goes back to 1731. It's not open for regular tours at the moment, but we do have special events there. We have special workshops, and it is available for rent if that's something that you're interested in doing, holding a reception there. Now, uh, probably my favorite place to visit at the Schenectady Historical Society would be our Maybe Farm Historic Site. That's out in Rotterdam Junction, just a little bit out of the city. And there we have a lot of space. It's a 1705 homestead with the original house still standing. And there we do house tours. We do all kinds of special events. We have festivals and fairs uh, going all throughout the warm months. So definitely check out our website about that. Um, in addition to that, we are, we're always doing outreach programs. If you have a, an organization that would like a speaker or someone to talk about Schenectady's history, we can provide those for you. We're very proud of those. Well, I grew up here locally. I was uh, born and raised in Gildan, New York, so not so far away, or maybe 20 minutes from here. And I've always had a fascination with history. And just, you know, when you explore the landscape around you, you can explore in terms of its aesthetic beauty, which I think uh, the Mohawk Valley has a lot of. But you can also explore in terms of its historic integrity. And again, the Mohawk Valley has so much of that. So as I grew up and matured and learned more about history and more about the fascinating history that we have right around here, um, I was just drawn deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, so to speak. So uh, after school, um, you know, I really wanted to take my history degree and put it to good use. And I was able to fortunately meet up with the people at the Historical Society and started as a volunteer, moved on to an intern, and now finally I'm here as one of the, the professional staff at the Historical Society. It's been a, a great journey of, of growth for me, and I've just been really happy to kind of give back a little bit to our community and try to educate local kids and local um, people of all ages, really about the, the fascinating history that's right behind our, our uh, doorstep. So I brought the furs that you see here on the table uh, for a very specific purpose. Now, if you're familiar with this, the history of Schenectady, you'll know that in the early days, uh, one of the primary industries in the area was the fur trade. In fact, that's what brought the first European settlers so far north into the, um, the Upper Hudson and Mohawk River valleys. In particular, these beaver furs were the most valuable. Um, so valuable, in fact, that you can do just about all of your purchasing in beaver furs. They would be shipped all the way out to um, as far as even Russia, where they would be uh, prized for their good insulating properties that make excellent winter coats. And because they were so valuable, in fact, they were almost uh, competed over and fought over a little bit. And so much of the history of Schenectady was, as it developed into a small town, was the competition between Albany and Schenectady for control of the fur trade. It really was a very important part of the history of bringing people out here. If you're interested in finding out more, feel free to check out our website at schenectadyhistorical.org. Hi, my name is Dance Haycock with Tribes Hill Heritage Center. I am the chairman of the board of our particular group. One of the things that at Tribes Hill Heritage Center we hope to do is we hope to reboot the leather industry. We want to teach people in a two-year program how to do the leather work that was traditionally done here. People did leather work before there were leather working businesses. They originally made the hides, they originally tanned the hides themselves individually. The current way that the hides are done is through a, most of them, uh, oil tanning process, a vegetable oil. So actually if you ate your hide it probably wouldn't hurt you any unless you had a problem with the dyes. Now here's a deer skin one that has been burned. 
the burning of deer skin here was done some long time ago when the only wood burner available was a single wedge-shaped piece. So this pictures here and on the back of this shirt over here, which is a little fox, have been done with that wedge shape. This, this would be a standard uh, style of shirt, fringed front and back. Yeah, this gives me a costume. Oh, yeah, I'm Victorian Lee. Oh, so make sure you go on the other side. Okay. Green fans expanded day or two in the most historic district in New York State. Just some of the reasons to visit and support Charlie <laughs> and Lee. I'm Laura Lee and I've been working on this history for several decades <laughs> and working with these different organizations. So if we start here with the Colonial Schenectady Project in this exhibit, we have um, some publications and things that came to a woman named Dr. Susan Jane Staffa. She grew up in the stockade at 32 Front Street. She was the third, if not the fourth generation in that home. She grew up very interested in archaeology. She became an anthropologist and she was teaching in Cairo, Egypt. She wrote the history of Cairo and her her parents became ill. She came home when her mother passed away, but she went back. Her father was still all right, but then her father became ill and Susan moved back permanently to Schenectady. She then started looking around where she grew up and realized that no one had really done a thorough uh, academic uh, anthropological kind of study on early Schenectady. And she started researching it and writing and putting these things together. And before long, she had this tour of the stockade. And that's what these orange maps are over here with the CDs and the cassettes. It's a printed map, and if we open it up on one side, you can go through a whole series of sites in the stockade that are uh, places where she has people telling us as if they were living there. She has them acting it out, and that's what the CD is. It's listening to the people then talk about why they were there, what their daily life was like, and who they are. Uh, but when you flip the map over, it's an architectural history of walking through the stockade. So it's a wonderful resource for taking a tour in Schenectady's stockade and to learn its history. Once she had that put together, we were realizing she put together an organization to support this called this Colonial Schenectady Project. It became a 501c3. We had a board of trustees and supporters, important people in the city, and we have those brochures from them that point these people out. But we realized that she had so much material that it needed to be a publication. So, okay, we're going to write a volume. We will support the writing of the volume. Well, before long, she had it was so much, she said, it can't be one volume, it's got to be two. So she finished volume one, and that's why it's called Schenectady Genesis, uh, volume one. And now the organization is working on getting volume two completed because we lost Susan. This is the, the map of the different sites in the stockade that Susan Staff identified to really show the character and a historical context for walking around in the stockade of today. And each of these 12 locations was to have um, a marker at them, but of course we don't want more signage really in the stockade. So some of this signage got put in place, but we, we, we never put up the rest. But we have this map, and we have the CD and cassette tape that explain, and you can listen to the people acting out what was happening uh, historically in these locations. And as I said, the other side, is strictly an architectural tour of different sites in the stockade. Here at the Stockade Association, it's an organization for the folks who live in the stockade. And it's like when you live in a neighborhood that matters, and the stockade is a Stockade is New York State's first historic district that's been recognized by as a national historic site as well as the local New York State one. But with all the houses and features that are in the, stock, the stockade and the folks living there, this, the association provides a way for this to be maintained and for the people that are living there to participate in the, in the stockade of today. 
The Stockade has a wonderful magazine or newsletter that comes out monthly except during the summer. It's called The Spy. And so this is something that, that belonging to the Stockade Association, you receive this publication. But everyone who lives in the Stockade basically gets it put on their doorstep and gets delivered. But I don't live in the Stockade and I want to have it. So I can join others in joining the Stockade Association. So these are the membership forms and the letter of, of invitation to join. Anyone may join this association, but as we don't live there, we just become a supporter. But then we'll get that in the mail and we know what's happening. This is, this is done by a descendant of those early Mohawk members of our congregation. And he was looking for his heritage, both as a Mohawk, but also as a Palatine German, because his early ancestors came uh, through, through the Dutch as the Palatine German. But when he came to the church, he's finding in our early records the actual baptisms, marriages, and membership information about over 100 Mohawk who belonged to our church in our early days in the late late 1600s, early 1700s. And these well-known sages of the um, indigenous people were actually members of our church. When they went to visit Queen Anne in England in 1710 with Philip Schuyler, um, we were learning to put these things together in a new way of, of reading Schenectady's history. The community, the community uh, out here, just the other side of Fonda from here, which Tom Porter has been uh, forming and putting together there. This is information about their current activities and things that they do, and describes how this group of Mohawk people is coming back to the land of their forefathers and settling here once again, so that they're an actual part of our community of today. And as our, the First Reformed Church was very connected with them back in 1690, in the time of that massacre or the raid, um, we are working with them again today uh, to, with our separate communities. As we talk, we're very interested in tolerance of diversity. They have their path, we have our path. We really respect and honor our separate backgrounds, and we want to work together and cooperate uh, in, that, in those regards uh, into the future.